Okay, I'm back, and I'm so excited to talk about this, and not for the reason you think. Now, the new episode of Hell of a Boss just came out, and even though I already talked about my theory of what I thought about the sloth ring itself in an older video, I still really wanted to see what Viv's interpretation of sloth was, because so far, wrath is the only ring I think makes sense landscape-wise, while lust, greed, and pride are all just cityscapes. So it's hard to get a good read on what exactly is different about each place, because funny enough, a lot of the princes, minus Lucifer, actually liked a few places on Earth, and I could imagine some of them adopting some of the architectural styles or landscapes of those places. But anyway, after the gif of Sloth dropped, I wasn't exactly surprised, I guess is the right word. Like, I had a feeling it was going to be another city and the gift just proved it. But when the episode dropped and I could get a better look, I was kind of impressed. Like, I love the floating islands and waterfalls, very Avatar style, but the color of everything was just weird. Like, I get in this universe, Sloth's main color is purple pink. Hard to tell sometimes, but all the buildings were the same hue as each other and the sky didn't really help as it blended it all together pretty much. But what was confusing to me the most was the hospital. Hear me out first, like two things. Why is it in sloth? Yeah, the medical system isn't the greatest, and I can see how some people can see like hospitals being slow and the waiting room process, but wouldn't a DMV have been a better choice? And two, why does hell even have hospitals? I'm often pretty confused by the world building in Hell of a Boss due to stuff like this, since we have firefighters in hell, which kind of makes sense since hellfire can't hurt them and then we have jails which means cops exist in this world and we have priests which i'm 50 50 on seeing as how the princes would be looked at as gods like i get most of that stuff being a thing in pride because of the human sinners but hell natives and other rings i don't get i just wish the world building made a little bit more sense and wasn't too much like our own world like the owl house made it really fun because it did have hints of our world in it but it had like magical reasons for other things. Anyway, I find it kind of different for Viv to go this route with Sloth being a medical themed ring as that's very different since a lot of people always seem to go the more lazy or tired route as people have interpreted the sin of Sloth to just be that. When in the olden days, it was more about fear and lack of trying and purpose in life. The sin's original meaning is extremely deep, but due to the 21st century and updated Christianity, a lot of people just picture the slow, silly Sloth animal at the zoo, which I never really understood since they they were born to move slow and don't really embody the message all that well. Though I have found lately the reason I love the sin of sloth so much is due to some parts of its original meaning sounding almost like depression. And as someone with recurring depressive episodes, I can relate to this sin. Weird, I know, but that's people for you. <laughs> uh, anyway, I can't really say anything about Viv's Belphegor because one, we don't see him, and two, he's not hinted at in any of the background art. And I have a big feeling we won't ever like have a reference to him anytime soon soon, but I do want to talk about citizens as my theory on them was actually super close. The sloth citizens were in fact goats, however Viv had already hinted that they were the candleheads in the Aussie episode, so I completely missed the connection. However, Viv based the citizens around Baphomet, which I don't get because Baphomet isn't really a biblical figure, more like the mascot of Satanism as they're only ever brought up during a story of the Knights of the Templar. Other than that, they're mostly a figurehead of bad omens, like the biblical lore surrounding Baphomet isn't really biblical lore, if that makes sense. They're more like a deity or something to worship than anything actually concrete. Though Baphomet could technically be another deity with just a different name, we don't really know. I really can't get into all of this because we'll be here all day. But anyway, my main point is I don't get why the sloth citizens resemble him if they're mostly supposed to resemble the prince of the ring. Unless Viv is, is basing Belphegor off Baphomet's song, which honestly I can totally see because she's done that before. So, so I guess that answered my own question. Uh, also off topic, sorry. Uh, in my sloth video, I talked about the imps that would live in sloth and how they were smaller than the average imp. And yay, the episode confirmed my theory. I originally imagined most of the imps in the sloth ring would be that height in order to do more insane projects. I originally thought the sloth ring was gonna be like a high-tech wonderland and the citizens would be so smart and they didn't want to make the inventions that would make life easier. So miniature tech-based imps would take the jobs to make them. The population of imps is higher there, but all the imps are very small 
small, so it evens out. Anyway, this intro is long enough, let's move on to Belphegor. So, I've already said why I like the Sin of Sloth, but Belphegor made me love it even more when I was reading about him. Belphegor is a demon who helps people make discoveries. He seduces people by suggesting to them to make outlandish inventions that will make them rich, and also the ability to not work that hard on it. Although, a lot of what these people try to make are doomed to fail, as he's tricked them to stay in a constant stream of dreaming. Not asleep. More like when you have an idea and forget about it like 20 minutes later. He's a complicated demon, I know. And just like Lucifer is a fallen angel. However, he didn't really leave willingly like everyone else. He was asked to pick a side in the war and did not want to. Not because he couldn't choose, more because he wanted to be left alone and messed with his puzzles, which unfortunately got him cast out. He then became lieutenant and was sent to Earth as an ambassador and to also check out if marital love was real or a fallacy that could be taken advantage of. But ironically, didn't find anything. But weirdly enough, he did have like a thing with Mary Magdalene, but mostly because Belphegor was amazed by France, mostly Paris. A lot of his personality and style is somewhat similar to Osmodia's, but a lot of demons back then are depicted as being into sexual stuff, so yeah, take that with a pinch of salt. Also, fun fact. I just found out that the seven deadly sins have counterparts, and his is the angel of beauty. As Belphegor is a man who likes to think and make things easier for himself, I can imagine him not finding art beautiful and a waste of time, whereas beauty is in the eye of the beholder and debating it would lose its meaning. So this would kind of hint at Belphegor being somewhat of the type to be like, you all need to like what I find pretty and interesting because I'm the smart one. I know what the correct answer is to everything in life. <laughs> Anyway, when designing Belphegor, I did what I always do, look at the Lesser Key of Solomon to get a good idea of the character, and well, there wasn't really much to go off due to him just looking like a trollish human, though I like that they put him in the thinker pose with his hand behind his back, kinda like he's letting you know something's up, but thankfully all his biblical lore was extremely helpful with the design. Since I had already made a character related to him, I figured I'd use the same style and body type, so I made his horn sharper and more angular, along with putting the plates on his horns. Again, it's more of a fashion thing. And speaking of fashion, I knew I couldn't put him in the same style as Coda, which is just basic tech wear as that's more edgy and young, but I still wanted the tech inspired look. So I mixed like a bunch of French royal styles and Tron styles to fit better. It's a weird mishmash. But bear with me. <laughs> but bear with me. So like a fun, piratey, three lapel collar. Uh, crop the jacket to be more modern with like a simplified version of Ormolu. I really hope I said that right. My French is just bad, all right? <laughs> uh, his under outfit is a simple tight fit tunic split on the sides with thigh high boots that allow him to float, but he never uses them. As for overall features, I kind of just stuck with the picture from what I can tell. He's depicted as an older man, so I kept the beard and did my best to make him older looking. I also didn't mean for him to look like a white haired Dracula, but now that I see it, I can't unsee it and I can't go back and fix it. <laughs> Uh, and if you're wondering about his hands, he has prosthetics, though he technically didn't need them, but my version of him likes to experiment on himself sometimes. They're also designed to look like porcelain doll hands, another flex at his love of France. Also, as you saw in the beginning of the video, his original chest style had a lot more going on with like a diamond shaped collar and buckles across his chest. There were also a few other straps I was originally going to add, but really didn't feel like they fit him anymore since I kind of drew him like, man, a really long time ago now that I'm thinking about it because I drew Stolas first, but then I had to go back and rework him and I didn't rework Osmodius and I kind of didn't rework Sloth either. So I may need to go and look at the others and see what needs to be changed. Um, but yeah, after working on him, I was like, yeah, nah, this isn't gonna work no more. So I simplified the neck collar and made the darker part longer. Uh, I also just realized he and Solus have very similar hair now, even though I originally didn't plan for Solus to have long hair. But what can I say? I love guys with long hair. Uh, his hair is also styled similar to Coda's with that like palm air fire style going on. It's so techy and sharp. It's like the perfect thing for a tech based world. Uh, I also gave him a monocle. No real reason why, I just thought it looked cool. 
Also, the chair behind him basically does everything for him. He hardly ever walks anymore after it was built. As for the chair's design, I kind of based it off those 70s egg chairs. I'm not super good at drawing furniture, especially for stuff that doesn't exist. Like, yeah, the 70s egg chair exists, but like floating robotic chairs do not. <laughs> But I think it came out all right. I mean, I tried to add French applique as well, but super tiny details hurt my head and that's just a lot. <laughs> but I think it came out okay. Uh, he also loves puzzle cubes. The more complicated, the more fun he has with them. Also, before you all get on my ass about him being blue and not pink, like Viv made Sloth Sky, I actually based his colors off his original color, which is light blue. So you can see why I chose pink for Lust instead, because having two princes being blue would just be kind of weird. Anyway, Anyway, this next part is all just my ideas on him and the way he acts. So his biblical lore states he gives knowledge to humans with the double-edged sword of all their ideas failing. But I like to think that he keeps certain ideas that he likes enough to actually make, to which he ends up creating and uses, and that he has been advancing his ring of hell to the point of it being so advanced not a lot of work really needs to be done. Sloth is like what the world would be like if we didn't have other things holding us back. I also like to think that with the amount of ideas that come in he spreads his knowledge to his citizens allowing them to to also work on the projects he doesn't have time for well the imps are the ones working on the projects the citizens just make sure they work in trials and take all the credit i also would have made sloth a winter type landscape as anyone who works with high-tech stuff would know heat is always a problem uh as for family since i did make coda his grandson i did give belphegor two kids a boy and a girl the boy seems to think he'll one day take Belphegor's spot, but that's never going to happen. Uh, he's not as quite smart as he should be. Uh, the family has a bit of a competitive streak as everyone feels they're smarter than the other, though Belphegor's daughter has decided letting her brother believe the lie that he will succeed and is smarter than her is easier than telling him the truth. Uh, she did go on to marry and has four sons, triplets and coda belphegor's son also married and has twin girls who unfortunately can't perform their telegenetic abilities without touching i probably should have said that they all have this ability i always viewed this power as the lazy person's dream power but yeah the twins can't perform well the triplets abilities are fine however they all seem to share a brain so they tend to trip over each other due to that coda is the only one belphegor has any interest in as coda actually works on his projects instead of having someone else do it for him uh he was also born without his right arm and leg which is unusual considering their family is from a fallen angel and are basically gods in this world so belphegor finds his grandson fascinating they often work together and chat. He's the only one who knows that Coda is married to a succubus. My version of Belphegor is an extremely cold man to all, but what he likes, he's calculated and conniving, but also very passionate about human culture, although the more bougie side of human culture. He's a complicated old man who was given this role unlike the others who wanted it. Yes, I'm including Lucifer, as yeah, he may not have wanted to be kicked out, but he did not want to love humans and chose to defy God. Whereas Belphegor didn't care either way. Anyway, I love Belphegor. He has such a rich biblical lore, and it kind of sucks people only think of his sin as lazy or not really know who he is. I think he would have been a fun character to see in Hell of a Boss, as he actually ties in well with Ozzy and Maman. They're all technically friends in biblical lore, but also with how smart Belphegor is, he, he easily could have designed Viz's arms and legs and easily could have made deals with Maman for simpler inventions to sell to the other rings of hell and even be the reason human sinners even have phones and Wi-Fi. Like, he's Lucifer's lieutenant for crying out loud. But whatever, he's a dope demon and I love him and I super love what I made. Again, it's not animation friendly, but it's my vision and so very clearly not meant to be animated. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, next video will be Androlfus, who surprisingly won't be a reimagined version as there's not much to go off in his biblical lore so yeah uh remember to like comment share and subscribe it really helps out the channel and me i hope you all have a super fantastic day and i'll see you guys in the next one bye